Please welcome back to the Castro stage directors Jonathan Neer and Danny Menken. Wow. Um, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I was outside while the film was going, so I'm not sure. Did he take the picture at the end? Uh, I wasn't 100% wasn't sure. But in any, any event, we, we're very moved uh, and, and excited to be here. And we would love to invite our executive producers, Nancy Spielberg, Ori Eisen, I just want to say, we could have never made this film without these two amazing people that are with us. And this whole production was just a, a team of very good people that tried to do something good together and to tell this story um, to the as widest audience as possible because we feel it's important. Yeah, and we want to acknowledge also uh, Amos sisters, Michal and Ilana, they're both here with Ooh. us. Mm -hmm. As well as our musician, Christopher Gubish, if you loved this music as much as we do, give a round of uh, applause to Christopher Gubish. He's right here with us. Came specially today from LA. And he drove seven hours to come here from Los Angeles. And actually, the sound in this place is so good. I never heard this film as good as today. So thank you. It's so fantastic. Yeah, and uh, last but not uh, least, we want uh, you guys to all welcome uh, Amos Nahum. picture of you. And, and whoever of you is interested and saw the whole process of how we took this picture, which is really the picture of his life, which tells more than the story that you see here, because it tells the story of Amos, and in many ways, and Amos will talk about it later, tell the story of the world as it is now and the environment. So this picture is offered to one of you guys that will bid for it. And the profits from this, uh, most of the profits from this goes to uh, support uh, the Jewish Film Festival, which brings such stories. <laughs> and, and to support our distribution, if you think this is something that the world should see these days. So please don't say yeah. Uh, take your check out, you know. <laughs> so this is a, a very important uh, picture, and uh, Amos, maybe we'll start of why this was so important for you. First of all, thank you, Danny. Thank you, Yoni, Nancy, Ori, and his wife, Mirit. She decided to stay behind. Thank you, Mirit. <laughs> to my dear two sisters that are here and probably as important as everybody else and as much as my girlfriend, Blaze, is also here. <laughs> the polar bear indeed was a symbol in my life, not necessarily as my sister said, as my father, but as a warrior of mother nature and a desire to change the perception that we all have, not just you or me or any one of us, about the wildlife. The idea is how to take the image of something that is considered to be the most ferocious, the most dangerous, 
and to portray it in setup of life that is a little bit different. Sometimes that is very tender about this wildlife. In this case is the polar bear, and not just polar bear by itself, but the polar bear together with their two cubs. At this moment, it could be the most dangerous moment probably in the wilderness, but she took care mostly of herself and the two kids that she had by her side. In this case, we decided that Adam and I to stand and we saw the polar bear coming out from one island, like by the end of this theater, if you look back for a moment, how far? And Adam and I, the filmmaker that we missing between us today, he is still in a high Arctic right now, not since four years ago, but in the past months or so. And Adam and I stayed on the surface of the water. We treaded hot water for almost 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, please. Cold water, but we knew that we could not be aggressive or to be pushing against her, we had to let her come toward us. The mother and the two cubs could go 359 degrees around us and totally miss, and we, we totally missed her. But she decided to come directly at us at all time. It was the moment that probably never will happen again, and she came directly over our head. Adam and I had to go down only to three meters or 10 feet, looking up, and she was over our head, and not just one, all three of them looking at us together. That's why we made this print, it's a fine art, it's a 60, by 40, 60 inches by 45, made in the highest quality of paper, is archived for over 100 years, and framed to perfection in a way. We made only 30 of this print, or we made them only to order. We made one for the last event, that was on uh, Thursday, and for tonight, or for this afternoon, for this crowd here. You are welcome to bid on it, and I'll be happy also to, sh to send the bidder a letter of authenticity of all what you described now and exactly how it was taken for your, for your generation or for your, as we call it, for your legacy. I go first? Fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed this movie as much as we did. Uh, for some of us, this is the first time we are seeing it just like you, because these guys are always showing them a piece here and a piece there and a rough cut here. I must say, bravo. Well, let's give it to them one more time. This was amazing. I'll just share a few words and then hand it to Nancy. But about uh, four years ago, uh, at a coffee shop, uh, I was pitched, would you like to help make this movie about taking pictures of a polar bear? I'm like, what, no one took a picture of a polar bear? Well, not exactly like this. Uh, after telling them that whoever is taking the picture, that guy over there is completely crazy, and telling them, feeling them doing it is also crazy, I said, I'm in. The one thing I'll share with you, which I would love Nancy to say a few words about, is uh, Jaws was one of those movies that uh, gave bad rap to white, uh, you know, great white sharks. I don't know if you saw in this movie in the beginning, there is one uh, shot of a great white, and it looks like he's smiling and laughing even. And I'm so happy that the Spielberg family is now uh, doing so much good for Mother Nature. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, actually, and, and I stand here, I think I'm only Spielberg in the audience. Do I have any relatives here? Good. No more relative. No. Um, so I do feel compelled to apologize on behalf of the Spielberg family, even though it was really Peter Benchley's fault because he wrote the book. But um, yes, my, I think my brother added to, unfortunately, demonizing the great white shark. And I think that smile was where we realized that there is a side to all of the creatures that is benevolent and wonderful and natural. Um, and didn't involve eating a lot of people. So I, I apologize to the great white sharks, and really I'm so grateful for Ori saying amen when he was asked because he has a huge heart. You have a polar bear giant heart. <laughs> and, and he knows the films and the stories that need to be shared um, with audiences like you, and thankfully to thank for the biggest, best, oldest film festival really uh, for giving us this platform. Nancy, for you and your brother, your apology is well accepted. <laughs> On and behalf not, of the Sharks. not just accepted, it was a motivation to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yeah. And you can tell him too. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> and it was 44 years ago that uh, Steven Spielberg did Jaws, and now we've made a uh, picture of his life, and we were uh, four of us in the Arctic, uh, Amos, Jonathan, Adam, and I, four Jews, so we really should have called it Jews <laughs> instead of you know, the movies, instead of Jaws. Yeah, look, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and we'll open it up for a couple of questions from our audience. First one's to you, Amos. Um, you know, I understand the risks you take and the obsession and the passion behind it. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about, and maybe this is not the case for you, but how do you manage fear? <laughs> do you have an hour? I don't know. I'm afraid to speak about it. Because if I will, everybody will do it, and then I'll out of job. <laughs> well, as my dear friend standing here, and maybe he's not in a the theater, he's just outside for tonight, for the film of tonight is about another friend of mine from Israel that together we've been in the same service in the military and talking about the evacuation of the Jews out from Ethiopia to Israel. Well, in a service, we learn how to deal with fear because we're standing in the front of a fire. It is a question of training, um, exercise, and being prepared, and being repeated again and again and again. So when I came in the front of fear in front of this animal, I had already about almost 35 to 40 years in my experience being in the wilderness. It's not something that happened immediately. It happened time. I learn how to deal with my own personal fear, my own perceptional fear, and if there is a fear really outside. So anytime there is a fear, you look at it, I try to take it out of my heart or my mind, look at that, what I'm really afraid of, and then slowly but slowly peel it off till eventually I'm able to deal with it peacefully. Thank you. Um, this is for the two directors. Um, you know, the title has double meaning. You know, it's wanting to get this picture of his life, but it's a picture of his life. So I was wondering if you could talk about the balance that you had to, you know, this fine balance between what he's gone through, his traumas, relationship with his father, war, and the environment and polar bear and photography and the other things that the film's about. Well, it's, 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 it's the toughest question how to find a balance, you know, because, uh, um, and especially when you make a film for so long and you've seen it so many times, you have to stay very sensitive to your own feelings and, and um, you know, authenticity. And, and then you just find the balance that you feel is the correct balance. I, I, I can't have an answer for that. And, and I, I, to be quite honest, until the film was out, we didn't know if it's good. Uh, you know, it's just a question of how the, the audience receive it and what they see in it. And many people see different things in this film. Some people see the war, some people see the environment, some people see the universal connection between father and son. It's all his story in our eyes, you know? And that's why we combine this two. This is not a regular environmental story because um, we believe that it's very important to show the people behind this. And if people will get connected to Amos and to his story, they immediately will be connected to what he loves, which is nature. So this is our you know, way to contribute to the environment, not to make just about the environment, but to actually show a person who's so connected to the environment through him to connect people to the environment. Uh, my last question you co-directed, and I noticed that you uh, did some cinematography, but how did you divide the directing duties and collaborate? Talk a little bit about your collaboration. Yeah. So collaborating as co-directors in a movie like this, co complicated movie like this, it's almost as hard as being married, you know? Whoever is married here, you know? <laughs> It's almost like you, you want to go travel somewhere, but you know, you want to respect the other's vision. So we worked a lot in a way on how do we respect each other's vision because Jonathan has made award-winning films by himself, by himself, and I've done that by myself. So uh, we had to have a lot of you know, communication and respect one another and bring each other's point of view. But 
I think in the core of it, because we have done it before that in Dolphin Boy, uh, we were able to know what is each other's strength and uh, just tap into that, which is again sometimes like uh, marriage, not that I'm a marriage uh, expert. <laughs> so what, what were those strengths for each of you? Uh, I'm fast. I run really fast. I play tennis, you know. I'm <laughs> no, it's hard to know, you know, what is our, our strength. But I think, you know, in, in many ways, we very much respect each other. And uh, in many ways, we knew what we wanted this movie to feel like. And, and we waited for 10 years. I mean, we could have had the movie a few years ago, but we were not feeling that this is the movie that we want to show with UJ here at the Castro. And this is the movie. So that's kind of what we got to some point that uh, we could have reached this, the movie that we wanted to show together, both of us. Yeah, well, I really respect that. I, think, I don't think anyone should ever finish a film until it's ready. <laughs> can, I, can I say one more yes, thing? Please, with the permission honor. of this team and the permission of the crowd, Please, let's raise uh, uh, applaud for one person that's missing here, that without him, probably none of this could happen, and without the team, and always in the teamwork, it is Adam Ravitch, the filmmaker. Please, let's raise, raise an applause to him. <laughs> and about Adam, I would like to say one more thing. Just like with Yoni, I had the opportunity to be their mentors earlier in their career. And it was a time when I went almost 10 years ago or more, 14 years ago, to do the, the polar bear, but I went with a team that was not as good. The next time when Yoni and I talk about making the movie, I said, I want to have a team that I trust, that I can count on. And look what happened. Beautiful team of people, supportive, imagination, ability, and working together for one thing, which is bigger than all of us together, is out there, is the wilderness, and the beautiful environment that we have on this planet. It is for the planet, and it is for the wildlife, for all of us to preserve, to take care of, to be responsible how we're acting toward it. So, we have time for a couple of questions from our audience. Anybody want to... Just have, raise your hand. We have a question here in the front on the aisle. I have a, a heavy and a light um, question. The heavy one first, the, the children who died, did we see them in the film? Yeah, the two Inuit, Inuit guides that uh, died two years ago are Billy Kalujak and Patrick Kalujak. Billy is the son of um, Joe, oh, who is the one who said Nanook. Yes. He is the one that spotted the polar bears. And Patrick is the driver of the second boat, and he's the one who's cutting the fish in the beginning. And both of them died, and we um, oh. dedicated the film to them and to the family and to the Inuit people that we met there, which are really beautiful human beings. Oh, thank you. Um, well, the, the, the light and frivolous question is how in the world did almost stay so gorgeous all those decades. <laughs> Drop dead gorgeous. The question is, how is Amos so beautiful inside and out? <laughs> that is the question here. And Amos, please, please let us know how are you so beautiful. Uh, how come it's you're so beautiful? all because of my girlfriend. She feed me very good pasta and shrimps. <laughs> um, I can say thank you, God, and thank you, America, for giving me the opportunity to be here for so many years and to have all this crowd and this team to be by my side. It is all the support of people working together, sharing each other for a goal that is bigger than us. We have time for one more question. It's gonna be on your left in the center over here. Thank you so much. And you are an incredible role model, not only for human beings, but for the nature and wildlife. My question is, and in the film, and you've taken so many risks. Have you ever been, in, in that, when we blacked out, um, really injured? Um, because it, it didn't address that 
because you've faced a lot of adversity, but did you have any physical, you know, really bad situations? There was, it mentioned their almost day, but did you have any actual? <laughs> there is no bad situation. It's only lack of preparation, and any accident is already responsible for mankind. That's why it took me 40 years until I came to the stand here and for to be able to make those pictures. It takes a lot of time and retreat. We learn in the service, in especially in, a spe in a special units, that retreat is not a defeat. The price of one human being is bigger than anything else. So we don't, I did not go under my control. In 45 years that I've been in the state, over 5,000 people travel with me. No accident till today. And I hope not tomorrow and not any other day. It is all by looking forward, understanding what's in front of me, and to know that if there is a reason to retreat, I'll retreat before taking any picture. No picture worthwhile of any accident in the water, even if we turn empty-handed. And they were concerned until the fifth day if we return empty-handed. And as remember in the movie I said, we have 24 hours is a long time for something to happen. And they trusted me, and eventually we came up with the result. But there is no reason to risk anything, all calculating risk versus calculating opportunity. And that's something that we are missing in a Western environment. We all think about the, uh, the risk we are taking, but rather than the, also the opportunity to come up with this and what these people created. Yeah, and remember, this is a man who gave up on the gun and transformed it to the camera. So he switched the risk that he had in his lifetime as a soldier defending our country. And these days, you know, he uses the lens in order to bring beauty to the world. So when Amos takes risks, he learned it from the army and the gun is doing horrible things, but the camera is bringing beauty. And that's what is Amos showing us now. He was a soldier of our country and today he is a soldier of mother nature. And I just want to add one small thing to this. Uh, we are afraid of sharks, as we mentioned in the beginning, but there are less than uh, seven or eight sharks attack, deadly sharks attacks in one year. We kill 270,000 sharks in one day. And this is true numbers. You can check me out later on, on Google. So I think what Amos is trying to do is to tell us a different story. He didn't want to. I mean, some people say, said in the film that he has a death wish. If he would have a death wish, he would succeed many years ago. <laughs> he doesn't want to die. He wants to live life to the fullest and to show the beauty to as many people as possible and have very powerful experiences. Um, and this is what he does, you know, so... I think it's inspiring, and th th that's why we made this film about him. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah well, by the way, one of the most dangerous sharks, uh, you probably would agree with me about that, are actually human beings. They are some kind of the most dangerous sharks you can, you can relate to. But in many ways, uh, Amos, this is the uh, picture of your life, and Ori has some kind of uh, information about this picture. I have, I have a blurb to read. <laughs> that, that's part of what executive producers do, I guess. A lot of people ask, well, what do you really do? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Uh, this is a little bear that we got as part of, uh, thank you, Nancy, for holding it for me. I have a job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll describe this uh, photo for you. And then is Ken here in the audience? Ken, raise your hand so people know who to make bids with. All right. All the, the man with the gray suit. So this is a photo which is up for auction. It's called Polar Bear Above My Head. Yeah, that makes sense. It's uh, black and white, as you can see. Uh, it's framed, and it's limited just to 30 prints, as Amos shared with you before. And it's signed by Amos. The retail value is $6,300. And this will be a blind bid. So we ask you that you start at a minimum of $5,000. Uh, again, give it to Ken out there. There'll be a form. And the highest amount basically would win, and Amos will ship it to them right there. And anything that you bid above 6300 could be tax deductible as part of the donation to the foundation. Thank you so much. Danny, I'll let you close it. Yeah. Uh, 
we will be with a picture and Amos at the second floor, what we call the me mezzanine. The mezzanine. So we will be at the second floor. So if you don't mind, let us just go there because that's where the picture will be. And if you guys are interested in some of our past movies, DVDs, they are still there as well. And we are honored and thank you so much for your help and support. And um, see you next time. And we will be in San Rafael, right? San Rafael on August 4th. San Rafael Theater. So if you know of people that will be interested, and, and if you like the film, please share it with them. And if you didn't like it, just keep it to yourself. Okay, thank you all for coming.